You are listening to Unfuck Your Mind with the real, raw, colorful, authentic, empowering, control profanity loving human Zach Laotis, soul activator, master key holder, and intergalactic elder. Zach loves to find lessons in adversity to advocate humanity one listener at a time. She also enjoys having fun along the way. Check her out at ZachLaotis.com to see what she's up to. But for now, let's pass it off to Zach. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Unfuck Your Mind. I'm your host, Zach Laotis. And in today's podcast, we have Saida. She's an intuitive counselor, energy healer, and channel for spirit. Serving as a gateway between the worlds, Saida connects with the higher realms to convey message of truth and light to those she assists. Saida anchors the light of the heavens into the physical realm, transmuting the wisdom of angels, ascended masters, and star beings to aid in the spiritual development as ascension of those on earth. And she is a whole lot more than we have in that intro right there, guys. So, Saida, welcome to Unfuck Your Mind. I am so happy that you're on the podcast today. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much. I'm very grateful. It's such a pleasure to have you here. And like I said to you, I found you on Instagram. I started following you right away because I call you my confirmation queen and you know, when I connected with your messages and you, I was like, this girl is a lot more than what she's writing on here. So I had to like showcase you to the world and, and really just connect with your, your heart, your soul, your being, your light. Cause it's just such a graceful place to be. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Eternally grateful. Yeah. So bring me back to that time where you started doing this work because it feels like it's way before time and way before this world that we live in right now so bring me there bring us there hmm. well I guess I have to figure out where to where to start because I feel like you have a point in that there was something in me that's where the work has always been there the connection to spirit has always been there but I feel like for me because of the way that I grew up, I wasn't able to establish my personal connection with spirit. Mm. It was kind of shifted by, you know, my mother, the people around me, you know, the people that I grew up with. I felt like I wasn't able to fully connect in a very personal individual way, but the connection was always there. I just didn't understand it. I felt like, I was intuitive, but at the time, of course, I don't, I didn't know it was intuition. I thought I was just feeling things and I thought it was like everyone was feeling these things and maybe they were, but it was the same thing. They just don't understand what it is. Mm -hmm. Um, The work really got deep for me around 2011, 2012. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it was really triggered by me doing Reiki. Mm -hmm. I was actually in the nursing program. So, um, in the nursing program, I had learned about Reiki in the first uh, semester and I felt a very strong pull to it. I'm like, this is the work that I want to do. I want to start doing things on a spiritual level. And for me, that was my initiation into working with spirit on a deeper level in a more personal way. And, um, the first level of Reiki, cause Reiki has to three or four levels. And when I started doing it, it was very peaceful to start with. I was like, Oh, you know, I feel so at peace. I feel so calm. It was in the second level where everything just exploded. Mm -hmm. That's where I felt like I was really opening up, but also my life was changing around me. So um, my intuition started to increase. I was having visions and I met some of my um, galactic guides, you know, and I don't don't want to say it was a dream state because I wasn't dreaming and I wasn't sleeping either, but it was just through vision, through seeing them in my mind's eye. And they went away for a while because I sent them away. I'll admit that because it scared me. I didn't understand it. And I would say it was around 2014 where they came back when I decided to leave my mom's house, (laughs) go off. And I lived with my father um, and he was a little bit more open and receptive to this sort of thing. My mom wasn't. So um, my dad was a little bit more open and receptive to it. So I decided to do a course in deepening your intuition and becoming an intuitive counselor, which helped me to propel myself into what I'm doing right now. And when I did that course, it opened things up like 
floodgates opened. Immensely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So my intuition expanded incredibly. I was hearing, feeling, seeing, not just in my mind's eye, but physically, physically seeing things. And uh, my galactic guides came back and gave me the rundown of my, my life mission and what I'm here to do. So, wow. but I'd always known that in a way, it was just that I wasn't able to, I was afraid to connect because I feel like in this society, you know, Abrahamic tradition is so ingrained in our society. We don't even realize how embedded it is in us. Even if we don't really consider ourselves Christian or Jewish or Muslim, there's always something there that's like, well, that's evil. You shouldn't be doing that. You shouldn't be increasing your intuition. You shouldn't be opening up. And for me, I just couldn't ignore the call anymore. So I had to do something. So. Wow. I, I love that you said that because I knew about my gift when I was three years old. So, um, and, and I didn't understand. And I would go, I remember when I was leaving high school and trying to figure life out and I would go see these counselors and I'm like, well, you're good with helping people. And I'm like, really Einstein, but give me something to look at like I could help the world but I don't know how to help the world like what should what career should I get into and I did everything under the moon like when I tell you I did everything my uncle had a joke god rest his rest his soul but he he used to always say to me so what kind of job do you have now and he used to crack up jokes because I always changed careers trying to figure out me And it's, and you know, when you say people thought it was evil, my mom would say to me, stop talking to those people you're talking to. That's like the devil. It's evil. And I was just like, well, if the devil feels it's good, damn, I don't want to stop talking to him. Like (laughs) straight up, the devil is protecting me. I get it. Right. So I understand where you're coming from that sense. And, you know, I didn't want to accept it until I did colon hydrotherapy and nutrition. And people used to say to me, you know, your colon hydrotherapy, I've never gotten this from anyone else. Why is it that you clear so much out of the way? And I'm like, well, that was my back door to my, to my spiritual world. Like I would clear out the energy frequency as I'm clearing out the, you know, fecal matter. So then everything kind of stopped for me. Hmm. And then I'm like, okay, now step into your power. You know who you are. And I had no choice. If I wanted to make a living, I had to start doing this work. So did you finish nursing school? I actually did. I I finished nursing school and I attempted to do what everyone else was doing once they graduated nursing school and passed the the board exam. You know, I tried to get a job as a nurse and I just kept getting blocked. And it was around that same time where I saw that um, my spiritual teacher at the time was offering the intuitive counselor course. And I was like, I want to do that because I've been wanting to do it for a while and I wasn't able to. But then I'm like, well, I don't have the money to do it. But I would say within three days, I manifested that money. So it was meant, meant to be. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I think cool. But I felt, like, I felt like I really needed that time to discover more about who I was, yes. my authentic self. Because even doing nursing, it was, it was a recommendation given to me by my mother because she was like, well, you love helping people. You know, you like assisting people and nurturing people. You know, so for the average person, it's like, well, you like helping people. So the direct thing that they tell you to do is to do something like that. Mm-hmm. But, and I mean, and it's true. I, I do did, you know, I think I'll always love helping people. I think that's an integral part of why I'm here is to help others. But if you don't know who you are on a deep level, you're just mindlessly taking action. You're just doing what other people are telling you to do, but it's not coming from a deep sense of purpose. You know, you, you're not really connecting the dots. So for me, I needed that time to, to discover who I was on a physical level, on a spiritual level, on a mental level, emotional, like what are my beliefs? You know, what holds true for me? Yeah, so true. So how long have you been in this career? I call it the, the heaven's career, God's career. How long have you been doing this to help other people in this career? I would say I'm going on, this is my fifth year doing this professionally. Amazing. What are some of the great, I always say there's always great stuff that always comes out. So what is it that you recognize about yourself when you came into this field to do this type of work? Hmm. What is it that I recognized about myself? Well, I feel like a lot of what I recognized came from the experiences that I would have. Mm. And I 
feel like that's such a that's such a deep question too. It is. Because so much <laughs> happened. About it as I say this to you. <laughs> yeah, I feel like so much happened during that time, through my experiences, that it's so hard to even say what I recognize because now it's integrating like so naturally. Yes. Into my being that it's like. Um, but I would say maybe my my experiences with um, the angelic realm and connecting to um, star beings helped me to recognize my connection to that realm and that it was always there. And I think also what I recognized was that the hand that I was dealt in this lifetime, it was meant to be that way. I needed to be in a family that had some spiritual connection, but maybe even if it wasn't what I had wanted or what I I connected to on a personal, in a personal way, it needed to have some sort of foundation in my life, you know, because it, that having that, like when people talk about, you start to remember, that's part of the memory triggering that happens is, you know, the family that you're born into, what they believe, even if it's not in sync with what you believe at the time, it does trigger something. So I think I recognize just the connection that I've always had you know, and that will always be there. And it just keeps on expanding and expanding. And it's yeah. a beautiful part. Absolutely. Wow. Who are your ideal clients that you work with? That's a good question. <laughs> That's a good question because, because I've had to discover this through the years of working as an intuitive counselor. Mm -hmm. um, because I work online with personal clients, but I also work in stores with people in person. So there are two spiritual shops that I work at where I do my sessions. And I would say maybe back in the day, I would be like, well, my ideal client is anybody. Anybody that wants to come in and needs help, I'll just take anybody. But through the years, I had discovered that I don't want to work with just anybody. And it's not trying to discount anyone out of judgment. But the ideal client for me is someone who seeks growth, who seeks self-awareness, that wants to understand themselves on a deeper level. I would rather not work with clients that are just seeking quick fixes, mm -hmm. that just want to know the answers to everything, that just want to know predictions, because this is not what this is about. I mean, mm -hmm. predictions don't help your soul to grow. It doesn't help you to understand on a deeper level who you are. And for me, I feel like that's, that's my goal is to help people understand who they are and that all they need is already within them. So that's my ideal client. <laughs> yeah. And I love that you said that because it's so true. I remember when I started doing this, I did it, I think six years, seven years ago, I did, I did colon hydrotherapy. People dropped off thousands of dollars to me saying that they're going to come in for like all these sessions. No one showed up for their sessions. It was like, wow. it was done. And I was just like, I don't get this. Did I do something wrong? I was searching my name online to see if I had like a bad rep out there. I was just like, I don't get it. Why is it no, why did everyone pay me thousands of dollars not show up? And I think it was at that time that I had to jump into my spiritual self and say, okay, this is where I'm to be. And I used to work with everyone, you know, everyone. You mm -hmm. want this, I'll give it to you. And so I understand where you're coming from there. And then just a few years ago, someone said, who do you want to work with? I said, I want to work with the person that doesn't want and thinks I'm a psychic because you know what? That's not who I am. Mm -hmm. I'm a psychic. Yes, there's a different level. And yes, we could go through the psychic and yes, we go through the medium, but that's not who I am. And it feels like we have that same connection because now, yeah, I do want to work with the person that wants to go deeper into their soul to recognize their truth. And the more that you do that, the more that you recognize your truth and your strength. So, um, and, and saying all this, where, what are your superpowers? Because I know you have a lot of superpowers. I could feel it and I could see it in you, but what are some of the superpowers that you use to help guide people through this process? Hmm. Well, I feel like my abilities, um, I would say that they all come together I mean, I'm, I'll, I'll explain just for people, maybe for people that don't know, with clairvoyance is the ability to see beyond the physical, and clairsentience is the ability to feel beyond the physical, clairaudience is the ability to hear beyond the physical, and claircognizance is just the ability to know, to have a knowing mm -hmm. without having any kind of logical explanation. All of those work together for me. 
Um, but I feel like as I grow and develop that certain abilities will make, um, I guess will be stronger at certain points in my life. Um, and through them being stronger or me focusing on them, it allows me to expand upon them. I feel like right now it's my empathy that has been what I've been focusing on because when I tune into a client's energy, I can feel what they're feeling mm -hmm. and on a very deep level, getting into the subconscious and into things, maybe even to those parts of themselves that they're not aware of. Mm -hmm. So empathy being one of the main things that I utilize or that spirit utilizes to help me to help someone else. And then hmm, I could call it channeling, but as my work transforms, I feel like because I'm so at one with spirit, it's not even a sense of a being and then me and then there being a channel connecting us. It's like we're one. Yes. So yes. it's me talking. Yes. Oh, I love that you said that. And mm -hmm. I love it because, you know, I always tell people, the universe is not outside of you. The universe is inside of you. So I love that you said that. And, you know, people are like, yeah, but I want to connect to my guides. And how do I connect with them? It's like, yo, you got to connect with yourself. That's your guide. You're your inner guide. That's the heart. So Absolutely. that is just so beautiful that you said that, you know, I feel like you're so young, but when I look at you, like I see this wise elder coming out of you and it's just like, <laughs> I don't even know where to go. I feel so mesmerized. I'm saying this out of such bliss because I could hear spirit say she's still starting to recognize herself. It's still, this is all still new to you. And it's really not new to you because that's why I said, it's not this lifetime that you've been doing. It's been many lifetimes. And I hear spirit going, she's still new to this. I'm like, Oh, I know she feels me right now too. And I feel her. And I just, I, I love every aspect of your being, your light, your heart, even maybe the suffering that you've gone through to recognize who you are. Mm -hmm. So, oh, I don't know where, okay, there's so many places that I, they want me to take you or take the listeners or take everyone, but bring us to that time where you had difficulty and maybe trusting this process that you are in. Hmm. I think I'll go to, hmm. oh, there's so many, <laughs> but I feel like the most pivotal one was mm -hmm. when I was starting to really open up shortly after I did the Reiki level two mm -hmm. and I had gotten into a really emotional period and I think it was rooted in self-esteem issues. I just, I didn't like myself and I, I didn't feel that I was worthy of anything. And I was kind of like, I was bawling and crying and I was in the bathroom just sitting in the dark and I was with somebody at the time. This was years ago, 2012. And I was, I just heard a voice say, you can't stay with him. You have to leave. Mm. And I, I was shocked because I'm like, okay, where'd that voice come from? <laughs> you know, that was telling me that. And when I heard that, this is why I say, not even just for me, but for a lot of people, these abilities, they work together. So they very rarely work separately. They're always kind of meshing into each other. As I heard that, I felt a shift within me. And I knew that once I heard that voice and once I had that feeling, I wasn't going to be able to go back. But for me, that was very difficult because that meant that I would need to take the action that my soul was feeling. I needed to act upon that. And I said to myself, well, I'm not going to do it. You know, all because, all because you tell me I have to do this. Like, do you think that I'm really going? <laughs> so for me, it was, I was really resisting the flow because I didn't trust it. It's like, you have to give me an explanation as to why this is happening. Mm -hmm. And to be honest with you, I think that they were trying to give me that explanation when my galactic guides came through. But then I told them to go away because I, <laughs> I, was, I was like already going through so much change that I just didn't want to hear it. So it took me about a year and a half. Um, and I went through anxiety. I went through this period of where I just couldn't relax. I didn't feel at peace because I was really resisting that the process because I didn't trust the process. And I would say at the end of that year and a half, once I had left my mom's house and I went to live with my dad, he left me. <laughs> so I was, I was so resistant to the process. I'm like, I'm not going to go with this. And he ended up leaving me and it just came out of nowhere. It's like his feelings just went away. So it was almost this thing where, you know, I didn't want to take action. So spirit kind of just stepped in was like well 
you know, this is happening whether you like it or not. And I would say after that was where, that was like the trigger for me. I was like, okay, so I think I need to start listening. But even after that, it was still difficult. Mm -hmm. I still had trouble um, trusting the process. But I feel like after I started to do the intuitive counselor course, and once I started to practice uh, with people, tuning into their energy and feeling things, and then seeing how later on, how it always turned out being accurate, I mean, maybe there's something to what I'm feeling. And not just with the people that I'm working with, but all the things that I felt throughout my entire life. If all of this is accurate, what I'm tuning into for other people, then imagine all the other things that I felt in my life that were true. I just didn't listen, you know? So it was that instance with the guy I was with at the time. And um, there are probably some other instances too that I can't remember, but that's the biggest one for me, you know, where it was very difficult for me to trust that, that process. And, um, I think another time that it was difficult, it wasn't an, it wasn't an event. It was more so a period of my life it was where I was really struggling with releasing, um, my traumas, you know, mm-hmm the aspects of my shadow, you know, the part of me that said, you're not good enough. You're not worthy. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not beautiful. You don't deserve to have abundance in your life. I mean, that was really difficult because it really made me um, kind of turn away things that, you know, I was supposed to, I mean, I always, I ended up having those things anyway, but it put a delay on it because I was like, no, 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 I don't want it. And I really did want it, but (laughs) I didn't feel like I deserved it. So. I love that you said that, like, you know, you want it, but it's a fear of maybe receiving it or even being open to it. Don't want it because then I'm safe if it doesn't really show up. So there's just so much to that. It's, it's so beautiful. So what is your daily practice now? Cause I know you do that. I know you do a one card reading every day on Instagram. Mm-hmm. So what is your daily practice? My daily practice consists of me just feeling what it is that I need at any given point. Mm -hmm. If you had asked me this a few years ago, I would have said, you know, I'm going to do meditation. I'm going to tune into my guides to, you know, write down information from them, which, which I would do on a pretty much a daily basis. At night, I would tune into my guides and see if there was anything that they needed me to know or the collective to know, even though I haven't shared that information to this day, it's in a book somewhere. Um, but I would do that. Now I would say it's a much more natural process. Um, since I have less time than I did in the past, um, I still do meditation. I try to do it maybe three, four times a week. Um, but I would say my daily practice is just making sure that I'm in tune with myself especially when it comes to what I'm eating. You know, what do I feel like my body needs right now? Um, Tuning into, let's say, I don't know, if I'm feeling bombarded or overwhelmed. Like, you know what? I think it actually, instead of meditation, I just need to sit down and listen to music. Mm -hmm. You know, I I try to keep things very simple because I feel like spirituality is very simple. You know, I feel like, is this might be a bit controversial. <laughs> I love but, that you said that, though. It is simple, but people make it to be more difficult than it actually is and take it to be more serious than spirit wants you to be. Spirit always says to me, Zach, that's why these podcasts started because it's like everyone is too stiff. Zach, everyone's stiff. I hear this all the time. Zach, everyone's stiff. You need to loosen people up. And that's why it was like you coming in here, you're feeling exactly that same thing. And that's why... I needed to have you on here because I want your take on this. Yes. Well, exactly. It's the same thing. I feel like spirituality is very simple, but I feel like because of, you know, I feel like in the West we tend to take ideas from let's say the East and like ancient um, philosophies and ancient perspectives. And we strip away a lot of the foundation Mm -hmm. and it's taken and then it's capitalized upon. So, you know, when you do it like that, you kind of limit the development of the people that are engaging in it, you know? So I feel like people, let's say, you know, they want to balance their chakras and they'll have all types of things to do that, you know, crystals and 
essential oils and all these things. Now, it's not to say that these things aren't helpful, but that's the key word. They're helpful. You know, they're supposed to be in addition to you just simply tuning into yourself. It kind of guides the healing process along, you know, but something as simple as just tuning into yourself and just feeling your heart, feeling what that feels like, your solar plexus area, feeling what that feels like, all of the energy centers that you have, something as simple as that, so much healing can come from that because so much is revealed to you if you just sit in silence and listen and feel. You know, so I feel that for me, keeping it simple and just tuning into my body, that that's my daily routine. Um, for me, it's it's not so much about being, I don't know, I'm kind of contradicting myself, but life is kind of full of that. Yes. It's not so much about being a spiritual person. It's about being myself. I mean, I'm just, for me, it's just being the most authentic, simplest version of myself that I can be. You know, this isn't something that I'm trying to do. It's just something that I am. So I'm just, I'm just living. Oh, girl, now I know why they brought us together. Seriously, because I say that spirituality is not sitting on your pillow and om shanting your way through things. Spirituality is truly a lifestyle of simplicity and knowingness of who you are and being in that space all the time. So it's like you are exactly that that I tell people. Like you're making life more difficult by thinking you have to be a certain way to be spiritual. Right, exactly. It's, it's all these titles and triggers and beliefs that society puts on you that you, mm-hmm. you have to follow. So woo, you're like a you know, breath of fresh air because it's exactly what it is. It's, it's the truth of it. Mm-hmm. So take me through um, a client journey that you would take your client through. This is an interesting question. I haven't heard that one before. But. Wow, yeah client journey because it feels like there's so much depth into your work and the knowingness of who you are Hmm. so a client journey well it's interesting because most of the time with my clients let's say in person I tend to only see them once let's say every few months because I do tend to put boundaries on how many times you can see me in person Mm -hmm. You know, so I like to give my clients kind of space in between, like, let the energy work, like, see how things are going to manifest once you have the session with me. Because it's not just um, intuitive work, it's healing as well. So there's a lot of release that happens in our sessions. Um, But I always tell my clients in the beginning of our sessions that I consider myself to just be a channel for spirit. So it's whatever that you need at this point in time is what you're going to receive. So I tell them that I move my ego aside. I try not to be analytical with the information that spirit brings. And I just allow spirit to speak through me. And once I give my little speech, that's the cue for my spiritual team to come and join and start to really amplify the energy. And I tend to tune into their energy first. And then I get a sense of what they're going through right now. You know, so this is why I say the empathic abilities seem to, to be at the forefront, at least at this point in time. And I can feel in my body where there may be like stagnancy, you know, in the energy field or where there may be uh, emotions that are repressed or if there's an overactive uh, mind, I could see kind of like, I don't know how to really uh, express it. Yeah. Um, energe- like, cause energetically it's hard to put it into words, but I could see kind of like lines and stuff around, around the head area. If it's an overactive mind And sometimes spirit shows me images of um, like symbols that I associate with certain, um, certain things that they're struggling with, like maybe a broken heart. I would see a heart with a line going through it or something like that. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's like that where I'm I'm feeling what needs to be healed. And then I take them through um, maybe experiences that triggered Um, those things that they're still dealing with. So sometimes spirit will guide me to the mother, the father, you know, when they were in in elementary school where something happened, you know, so sometimes it's like that. And then sometimes I'll get an image of what their soul really looks like. So if they have um, gifts that they're not totally honoring, you know, I'll see their capabilities, what, what they're supposed to be embracing. 
Sometimes I'll see uh, the origins of the soul, you know, and where it's been before. And sometimes it's very practical, like maybe they're going through a job transition and spirit wants to guide them through that. Um, so I always tell my clients through this very individual. So everyone's going to get something different. Um, sometimes I'll feel in the middle of uh, the sessions too, the emotions building up. So if there's any kind of switch in the energy, I can feel it. So if I say something and their energy drops because they're kind of nervous, I'm like, I felt that, <laughs> you know, I feel in your energy that either you didn't like what I said or it triggered something for you. So I'm, I'm very sensitive in that way where I can really feel energy shifts. Um, and these sessions are very healing because sometimes I'll feel what they're feeling on an emotional level, but because the vibration is so high in the session, it's just released. So I don't hold on to it. It just, it releases into the ether. That's so beautiful. So they tend to go home feeling lighter. And so it's nice. All sorts of feels coming from you, right? Like I could feel it. It's, it's beautiful. It's like, um, I'm just hearing spirit. There's so many different things that you bring forth that bring so much light to someone's eyes, even though they, they don't feel that. And it's, it's, it's such a beautiful thing. So what is, I don't want to say, I don't know why they're asking this question, but it, cause I don't think there's much prediction. It's so fine that we spoke about predictions earlier, but what do you feel 2019 has to offer us as a collective? Hmm. Well, actually, that's a good question, though, because 2019 felt actually pretty good. I actually felt a lot of love coming through for uh, 2019. Um, and for 2019, I think at the beginning of the year, yeah, it was like in January, I did a healing circle. Mm -hmm. And for each healing circle, there's a theme. So uh, energy of focus. So Mother Mary was the focal point for, 20, for January 2019. And I feel like she was perfect because she brought through that energy of unconditional divine love. So I feel like, I feel like a lot of people are going to be guided to come from that place of unconditional love, not just for other people. It needs to be within yourself first, of course. So I feel like tapping into that first and then overflowing into the outside world. And I feel, I mean, I don't know, there's a lot that could happen in 2019, but I feel like love is going to be the guide for 2019. Yeah. You know, definitely unconditional divine love. And, um, you know, I actually want to sit with it for a second because <laughs> <laughs> typically I do monthly forecasts and I don't really sit with the whole year, mm. but I feel like a lot of people are going to be propelled out of their comfort zone. Yes. And oh, into yeah. their truth. Yeah. I love that. You know, and it's so funny because, um, I was getting a lot of downloads and coding. So there was a lot of coding that I do with a lot of my clients and I kept on hearing, this is the year for the divine masculine to rise. The woman had 2018, but now it's time for the divine, divine sacred masculine to rise. And I was just like, that's so true. And I have now like for Mondays, I do the Awakened Men Mondays podcast and oh, just nice. showcase men because I believe our men had so much, um, you know, patterns that they, and traumas and wounds that they were told that they can't show those because they had to be that strong warrior. They can't try a cry because, you know, it shows a sign of weakness. So I'm finding the men now that, you know, I was guided that 20, 19 was the year for the men to rise and to let go. But the woman had become so, I don't want to say powerful, but it has become very powerful to be able to support our men through this process as well. Mm -hmm. That's why I love that you said it's all about that love. Mm -hmm. right? It really is about that total love and compassion. Yeah. And, and I'm feeling that on such a deep level and just, you know, um, pathways and gateways opening up so so do you do a monthly forecast at the beginnings i know it's on your youtube channel but is it the beginning of the month that you do it or okay yeah yeah i try to do it at the beginning i try to do it on the first i'm very particular so i try to keep it like the second the latest second of the month the latest but yeah i try to get it out there on the first yeah it's amazing so do you work a lot with the moon energies as well or just yeah, I'm very moment. connected to that. I'm very connected to the moon energies. Even if I'm not trying to work with the energies, they're working with me. So <laughs> I'm, I'm always feeling, you know, those, those moon energies. And um, 
I feel like connection to nature is really important. So working with the moon energies, as well as just the cycles of the year, when the seasons change, that really has an effect on the body. So yeah. I, I, if I feel something in particular um, for like a certain period of time, I try to see, hmm, you know, what's happening energetically in terms of like the changes that we're going through on earth. Um, I find that fall into winter transitions tend to be pretty difficult. I don't know if everyone else feels that, but I know for me, it's a really, it can be a really sticky one because of all yeah. the relief that's happening. And then we need to rest. And I feel like in, in Western society, everyone wants to be on the go all the time. Everyone just wants to be t- taking action and doing this. And sometimes you just have to rest and just be receptive and allow yourself to just decompress and come down. I have no problem with that, but you know, <laughs> living, I have no problem with that. I love my sleep. You know, I love just being comfortable. Um, but it can be hard in a society where you, you just, no one recognizes that. You know, the average person is like, well, regardless of if it's fall, winter, spring, you have to come into work. You have to do this, do that, you know, which I get. But I feel like it would be nice if there was some recognition for mental health, spiritual health, emotional health. I feel like they don't really care about that, (laughs) but it's important. I think, yeah, exactly. I think it's really important. And I mean, the whole mental health thing is now starting to bring some light to it, but still, there's still some heavy stigma attached to it. And that's why... I think, you know, I've been through depression so much that I don't have a problem telling people I went through depression, but when I was going through it, I was like, I wasn't embarrassed about it, but I just didn't want to tell people because they, that's Mm -hmm. like, oh, she's weak. And I'm like, baby, I'm a warrior. There's no weakness in this body. Let me tell you, you know, so Uh at the end of the day, that stigma does not work with me at all. And I tell people, you know, I, especially the men. If you want to cry, cry. Like if someone has something to say about you, guess what? That's an issue with themselves. That has nothing to do with you. So I right. totally hear where you're coming from on that. You know, especially now with the blood moon, the wolf moon, the full moon, the what is it, the eclipse? The it's like it's like, you know, the toss salad of everything that we're going through. It's like rest and reset right now, baby. Rest and reset because there's a lot of emotion coming up right now. So what does self-love look like to you? Self-care, when it says self-love, the self-care stuff, like what are, what are some of your practices? Well, for me personally, it's self-care. I feel like it can change depending on where I'm at and where I've been lacking. Mm-hmm. Uh, for me, self-care can mean just getting extra sleep. And actually, this is very important because for me, it's not just having a good night's sleep at night it tends to be taking extra naps during the day. There needs to be like an extra session, like whether 20 minutes or half an hour, I need to get extra sleep. So it's not just nightly sleep. Um, so getting sleep, um, taking salt baths, I really like doing um, because I feel like it's very cleansing. So that can be part of self-care for me. Um, also doing meditation, but sometimes when I do my meditation, if I want to feel extra nourished and nurtured, I meditate with the rose quartz, Mm. Um, particularly a rose quartz that's a little bit more on the rocky side as opposed to a crystalline, uh, like really transparent or translucent uh, rose quartz. Mm -hmm. I feel like it takes you deeper um, and helps you to feel more nurtured deep within. Um, And I feel like the more crystalline ones are more so for the more subtle, more subtle energies, Mm. just putting that out there. Um, I feel like Self-care for me can also be um, just speaking words of love to myself also. Because I tend to be a giver. So I'm always giving, giving, giving. I, I love giving. <laughs> yeah. But um, sometimes I'm, I'm still working on the boundaries with the giving and knowing when to kind of pull back. Like, you know what, Saida? It's okay. It's okay to give to yourself too and not to feel guilty about that. So that's still something that I'm working on and also to allow others to give to you. you yeah, know. to be open to receiving. Yeah. So for me, it's physical things, but also just having compassion for myself. Yes. You know? Yeah. That's, that's- I, I feel like, yeah, I want to make self-care just a very, very natural thing, something that can happen every day, something that I could do every day that shows love for myself you know, and compassion and just understanding. Oh, I love that you said that because I know some people just say, well, just once a week, if I could do this, well, the if make most likely you're not going to do it. You already put the if in the sentence. And usually when it's mm-hmm. if, you like you put it at the end of the list, 
But I love that you say that you do it every day because you do all this work every day. So you have to show yourself. Mm -hmm. Wow, this is so beautiful. I'm so happy that you're on here. Oh, Thank you. I'm happy to be here. It's, it's just so nice to get to see someone behind the posts, right? And like I said, I, you know, I saw you on Instagram. I was like, total alignment one day. I don't even know how it happened. But I was like, I like this girl. I have no idea who she is, but I'm following her. I'm going to talk to her. I'm going to, you know, and I, I laugh at spirit because I'm like, guys, People are going to think I'm like single white female syndrome going on here. Like seriously, ah. you need to stop this, you know? Because I talk to women, I'm like, do you want to go for a coffee? And these girls are like, uh, who's this weirdo? And I'm just like, yo, yo, I'm not weird. It's like spirits on me to do this. But you know, it, it's funny because I'm just like, okay, so we're going to be a little weird. There's nothing wrong with being a woohoo, I guess. But it's, it's rather interesting to connect with it and you never know like is it a tribe member are you together from a past life are you you know so, like reincarnated soul that just came to me right now you know so there's just so much but Saida like totally a light and a beam of light within you girl like it's so beautiful and I love the work that you're doing now in the circles where are you located where you do their circles and stuff like that in person is that all on your website it's mainly online. Um, I record all the stuff that I do and I send it out through um, a private YouTube link. Okay. I have only been able to do one circle in person so far. And that's just, you know, just little details that haven't been sorted out with the location. Um, but I would like to start doing them more in person because the one circle that I did when I did do it was real. it was powerful. Yeah, I could it was powerful. That. And it helped me to see also some adjustments that I need to make during these circles because it really takes people up and up, up and away. So, yeah. you know, just making sure that people have the grounding that they need, that they have the rejuvenation that they need during the circles. Because, you know, it, it, I mean, it's a lot. It's a lot where mm -hmm. spirit is taking people during these circles. Um, but, yeah, mainly online for now until I can um, work out the details with the in-person circles. So all that information's on your website, I would take it, right? I tend to, I haven't been that good with keeping things updated with the events um, on my website. I tend to post um, Facebook events or on Instagram. I let people know when there's a circle, when there's a circle coming up. Okay. And guys, all that information's in the show notes just below. So if you want to be part of these beautiful circles, get activated because that's the only, that's 2019's world is, word is totally becoming activated and connected with that source light. Get a hold of Saida. All that stuff is in the show notes below. So I know she does magical work because I could feel it. She is magical. There's so much greatness. Like there is so much greatness. But I want to thank you so much for being on here and just sharing your light and everything that you're doing to bring humanity to a higher awakening because it's beautiful. I love your card readings. I love your cards. You're always on point with all my feels. <laughs> I would say that. I tell my astrologer, I'm like, hey, Phil, you're like on point with my feels. Like, you know what I mean? So yeah. you're always on point with my feels, regardless if it's like, two days later or a day later, or maybe even an hour later, like I'll get a message. I'll be like, what's that girl saying on Instagram? <laughs> I'll go on your page. I'm like, Oh, perfect. She posted. So I'll look at that. You'd be surprised. It's, it's interesting. So I have people that say that to me and I do have some people that I go to see, okay, are we all on the same wavelength? Are we all like on that same realm? And you know, okay, it's time to go a little higher. Let's see what else is going to happen here. But thank you for all that you do and sharing this light with, with the world, with humanity and bringing them to a vibration where they could release all that gunk. And I know even though that we work through our stuff, we're always working. We're, we're spiritual beings living uh -huh. experience. And, you know, a lot of my clients always tell me when I'm telling them I'm having a, an off day, they always say, Zach, you're human, right? Remember? And, and it's so funny because they're the ones that remind me I'm human. So sometimes I, I forget that I'm a human being. So that's it, right. It's mm -hmm. beautiful, right? Saida, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm so glad that we had this conversation today. Thank you so much for having me. Um, truly, truly honored to be able to have this really cool conversation. I, and I really like your personality because it's vibrant, it's real, and I like realness. You know, I, I feel like that's core spirituality 
101 is just to be real, to be yourself. That's it. That's all you need. Thank you for that. Because I don't know any other way to be. And it's so funny that you say that because a lot of my friends will say, I'm going to ask Zach and they'll say, listen, you know, she's going to tell you the truth. So if you don't want to hear the truth, just oh. don't ask her. Oh, I love it. Because that's how I am. I, I truly, people ask me things like, do you want to know? Do you want to know how I feel about this? Because you know, I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah. Like, if you don't know, don't ask. Yeah, and that's exactly what it is. I know. And that look that you just gave when you said that, and I'm like, I always give that look to my friends and they're just like, oh, she's about to, mm -mm, don't, don't, don't ask her. She's about to give you some truths right now. So, mm -mm. I have a friend that called me the other day. She went through a situation. She goes, I know that you would put me in my place and that's why I'm calling you. And I was like, girl, are you sure? She goes, yep, I am sure. <laughs> Yeah, there's only realness. And I think that's the only way everyone should be. And if you're comfortable and confident in who you are, there's nothing to hide. So Definitely. I yeah. agree wholeheartedly. Yeah. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So for anyone that wants to get a hold of Saida, work in these beautiful circles, get activated, get messages, work with the beings of light that she brings forth. That really, really is just the beginning of her journey because there's so much more that spirit <laughs> in this whole interview or this whole, I don't even like to call these interviews, but this whole conversation that we're having here, please connect with her. Everything is in the show notes just below guys follow her on instagram she does great things on instagram as well so thank you for listening to today's podcast with saida we look forward to hearing uh, we look forward to having you again on the next podcast on wise woman wednesdays until we connect again stay blessed be grateful for everything you have and just be authentically who you are without apology until next time have yourself a great day bye for now Thank you for listening to Unfuck Your Mind. Head over to iTunes and leave your five-star review and comment to get Uprising the charts so we can get this incredible wisdom into more airs worldwide. In the show notes, you'll find all affiliate links to what we've mentioned in the podcast or products Zach loves to use. Until we connect again, unfuck 1% of your thoughts and watch how your life shifts.